This video was brought to you by the community. Thank you to all of my channel members for your continued support. Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Argo SRV or Standard Recovery Vehicle. Now I quite enjoy the SRV. I think it's a very well built ship and it looks really good. The paint scheme is really cool. Argo I feel like are a ship manufacturer that we need to see more of their ships in game. At the moment, we are swamped by RSI and other manufacturers, and I kind of feel like that Argo are producing, or at least CIG, are producing some excellent Argo ships. The SRV is no different. It is extremely well built and the time i've spent with it although limited i've been having an absolute blast it may not have any combat weapons and it may have limited uses at the moment but i can't help but feel that as the game progresses then the srv is certainly going to be an asset to anyone in their fleet it has multiple uses that i can think of and we'll cover those as we progress through the video Let's start then with how the ship looks. I think that the Argo SRV looks absolutely incredible. There's something about that Argo look that really appeals to me. It's the same with the Raft, which will be the next video. Um, the SRV and Argo really are knocking them out of the park lately. I think they go under the radar a little bit. I would like to see more Argo ships because they look fantastic. Now, of course, they are on the industrial side of gameplay. And that is reflected well by the way the ship looks, right? So they look big, they look chunky, they're non-apologetic for how chunky they are. They look sturdy, firm and tough, which is the sort of thing that you would expect from an industrial um, ship and or any other ground vehicle, to be honest. So Argo have a design language which is growing on me rapidly. Now, the interior of these ships is just as good a place to be in the verse as any other ships um, in the game. They are incredible uh, for what they offer. Now the SRV is no different to that. The, the internals of the ship are fantastic. They're simplistic but also kind of elegant to some extent. It's a really well laid out ship and I've grown pretty fond of the SRV and the raft. Um, Argo ships, we need more because I want to get a bit more flavour in the verse, a bit more variety. So hopefully, when CRG get over their RSI um, fit, um, we'll start seeing some more of these ships, because they, they are absolutely superb, in my humble opinion. Designed from the off as a dedicated tug, the SRV utilises the patented Max Traction Tractor Plate and Integrated Arm Assist System to deliver unparalleled efficiency and usability. This innovative configuration coupled with rugged reliability of Argo engineering makes the SRV a perennial favourite of recovery workers, cargo haulers, megacorps and the UEE military. Ask any pilots ever been stranded and the chances are they'll regale you with a tale of the Argo SRV that pulled them to safety. The SRV is built to handle whatever you can throw at it. From simple freight and cargo towing to a harrowing search and rescue operations, its ultra durable armour and heavy duty shields ensure it holds its own when the situation gets hairy. The SRV's proprietary tractor rig accommodates a variety of situations when flying solo along with multi-tractor coordination for bigger jobs, making it the most effective and flexible tug available on the civilian market. The SRV may have made its name rescuing incapacitated vessels from the vastness of space, but its talents as a tug ship don't stop there. The in inventive tractor rig is equally well suited to transporting larger scale cargo, so why waste resources on a bulky multi-crew hauler when you can just lug just as much freight solo with an SRV? Argo's custom designed tractor plate was developed specifically for the SRV. Its unique specifications include a hydraulic boom and bespoke gimbal mount for the maximum flexibility. Working in concert with the SRV's innovative arm rig and utilising beam strength uncommon for a unit of its size, the Bullock packs unprecedented towing power and versatility into a relatively small package. Okay, so the ship itself is designed for one crew member so that would be you the pilot but there is room in the back to pick up stricken or stranded vessels and its potential passengers um that's my argo backpack clipping through the back of the seat but i actually think it looks really good 
CIG, make that a thing, please, because it looks awesome. So you can fly the ship, recover vehicles, and the passengers that are on board said vehicles can be stowed in the back safely. There's a table and even a bed there, um, so passengers are not a problem. So let's talk about some of the potential uses I think that this ship is going to have. Okay, so we know that it has a excellent tractor beam. We also know that multiple of these will be able to pull larger ships in tandem together, working as tugboats would, putting in a naval carrier, for example. So teamwork for bringing in bigger ships is obviously a plus. You can see here it has VTOLs, which are going to be very important in the future. Um, CIG have said that these are going to be pretty strenuous on the engines and power plants of your particular ship So it needs strong VTOLs. It obviously has the tractor beam here um, And when that's on I think the animation looks superb So potential uses in the future. So okay, we know vehicle recovery. That's a that's a given Things like I was thinking of so if you're running a salvage operation having an SRV drag carcasses to things like a reclaimer so the reclaimer doesn't have to spend ages traveling around you that could be an option because you can tow these stricken ships through quantum drive sometimes it doesn't work sometimes it does it's a little bit more fine tuning but at the moment it works fine for me i haven't had an issue with it um so that could be an option can we tow asteroids in the future maybe we're on a mining operation and you come across a massive collection of containium which is extremely rare these days maybe you could just start dragging asteroids to a mining operation maybe you could drag it to an arastra or even the smallest of pro uh, prospector or a mole so there are options for mining pirates are obviously going to use this to some effect uh, maybe they've disabled and soft deft a potential target and wish to drag the corpse in and take the crew captive there's also the possibilities of just tractor beaming salvage broken spare parts of ships uh, to other salvage operations in the verse. So there are numerous opportunities to use this ship and make some good money. It's very sturdy. Obviously, the VTOLs are going to play an important part. If you're trying to drag a stricken ship through atmosphere, you're going to need some serious horsepower to keep your ship and the ship you're towing um, afloat, basically. You don't want to be carooning into the through the atmosphere and into a planet because that's not going to do you any favors so there are multiple opportunities where this ship is going to come to its own even things like fleet battles clearing up the battlefield or maybe there's a disabled enemy ship that you wish to board a couple of these are going to be able to drag that ship closer hold it in place so long as the shields are down and if it's in a soft state death then it should be um hold that in place and then maybe if you own a legionnaire you and your friends can hop in that legionnaire and commence a boarding operation knowing that that ship is completely broken. So the SRV at the moment, not really a lot to do um, for it, but I can only see the game loops being exploited by this ship as the game develops. The further down the road we get, the more and more I'm intrigued by this ship. So let's then take a look at the internals and we'll start with the wonderful cockpit area because look at that sunset. This game is so pretty sometimes. Anyway, just a single seat, fairly humble, but I like like these little orange tints and accents you get. You get a little MFD to the right and the left. The detailing on the floor is amazing. We can see several, I'm assuming, power outlets at the bottom, or plug sockets as we call them in the UK. You can see there's like eight of them there. So it's not, it gives hints of industrial, but it's really tidy. So it's quite well thought out. Directly behind that, we have the component area of the ship where we'll have easy access to repair anything that gets broken. Resource management is on its way, and I can tell you that, ha look at the space here, there's plenty of space to get these components fixed. It's gonna be extremely useful just to have them behind the pilot seat, I think, especially as this ship has no weapons. Moving further back then, we have the living quarters, which is very, very humble, yet comfortable for you and your passengers. Really nicely laid out. We have a kitchenette, weapon rack, you can see tractor beam left in there. And of course, we have a bed for logging in and out, which is obviously a huge plus. So although very small, it looks smaller than it actually is. It's actually very accommodating. The only industrial flavor you get is from the ceiling. Um, everything else is really tidy. So it's really, really cool. So here we're going to operate the tractor beam um, just to get a flavor for how that works. Now, unfortunately, it got dark 
which complicated things quite a bit. Um, but as you can see, you can tow stricken ships. Um, this ship actually belongs to one of my community members, Pango. Thank you for letting me use your ship, buddy. It's his favorite ship. In fact, we call him Tow Truck Pango because he loves it so much. Um, as you can see, we're towing an eclipse. He's turned his shields off. Unfortunately, you can't get rid of that um, green UI around what you're towing. And I think that's to help you, but it's also kind of annoying, kind of just about breaks the immersion. But as you can see, we're pulling this ship not a problem you can go up to about constellation sizes although through some testing um pango has said that you there are some ships that you can't tow like a valkyrie for example so there's still work to be done um but the track to beam animation itself is really really cool so we'll go back into daytime so we can get a clearer look at what we're doing here so we have pango um ready to be towed let's talk about the gimbal limits of this track to beam so it's extremely good um better than some defensive turrets uh, the depression and swing rate is very very good as you can see you can actually pick up cargo crates as well if you wanted to tow cargo you could there's 12 seu hidden in the belly of the ship um so as you can see here the actual traversal of this tractor beam is very good no problems no complaints from me i thought it'd be a bit more stiff if that makes sense but it's actually very liberal with how and where you can point this thing the animation now that it's daytime you can see here it looks incredible i love that i love that my only minor complaint and it is minor and i can't remember i have towed a constellation before but i think the tractor beam is a little thin i can't remember if that gets thicker or not but that giant might just be me okay let's take a look then at the weapons and components that we will find on a stock srv okay so here we are on our trusty dps calculator live now as you can see it's fairly blank because we have zero weapons now let's talk about that briefly i kind of feel like although this is not on a combat ship at all that they could have just given it some bespoke bulldogs underneath the chin just for that little bit of security. It's not really be all or end all, but it's just something I thought was missing. Okay, so you can see the shields. We have the 5MA Chimali, which is size 2 shields. We have power plant, which is a size 2. The coolers are a cool car. Cool car? Cool core. And they're also size 2. And the quantum drive is the Hurricane. Um, which is a fairly big job you know it's all size two components so the shields are pretty tanky um so you can take the beating it's got the same whole hp as roughly a cutlass black i believe so there is protection there but i kind of feel like ah oh, just give it some bulldogs yeah the raft has them why not the srv but it's not really a combat ship it's not a huge big deal you just have to be careful so those are the stock components that you will find on the mighty srv Okay, so now it's part of the video where we're going to take our walk around of this wonderful um, machine and pick out some features that I think are really cool. So you can see here straight away, that's the entry point underneath um, the cockpit, just behind the neck of the ship. Uh, the cargo bay is located on the belly of the ship, um, which is hidden. There's a button you can bring down. You can fit 12 SU of cargo, so anything you find, you could track to beam to your location and take that away to sell you can also fit believe it or not a gray cat ptv in there um although i wouldn't recommend it because i get the feeling that the bouncing would be an issue so we have these wonderful awesome looking industrial vibe giving vtol thrusters and they look so good like the raft as well the raft is definitely the next video because i'm actually pretty much in love with that ship at the moment um but i just there's something about argo that is working for me lately and i don't know why i think it's just because i'm so you so used to like everything else being you know either luxurious or combat or it's a different side to the gameplay that we don't see enough of and i think argo do it really well so we make our way around the rear of the ship of course we have the massive tractor plate there looks incredible some thrusters and engines at the back um now as we get closer you, it only just started, starts to dawn on you just actually how wide this ship is and the long, long beam um, holding that tractor plate in place. It's quite a lengthy ship, 
but it's not it's all an illusion it's about the same size lengthwise as a freelancer i believe so it is a little bit illusionist because it looks thick and chunky you know and i, I really am enjoying the argo lifestyle i have to admit so we have the vitals i've said they're going to be extremely useful extremely important as well in the future so we make our way around our front we've got these sort of external pipes and guardrails and all of that stuff and we'll go to the cargo bay here so it's under the belly see this button here cargo access we'll hit that and down she goes so that's 12 SCU you can see the cargo grid there a little bit of a bounce is fine don't worry about it um, you could potentially put passengers in there um, I think you know if they're unconscious maybe there's like a little holding cage in there so they might be alright I haven't tested it but you know if you were to try and rescue a big ship for example and you haven't got enough room in the back you might be able to get a few people squared away in there only time will tell okay so we're gonna go up into the ship itself through the only entry point to the ship be coming facing the living quarters now it's so sp there's something about this design um from argo it just works right i don't think it's necessarily the paint color although i think that helps it's very tidy but with subtle hints of industrialism um i think it's very nice in here granted there isn't exactly a lot for you to do but here you can see the seating area for your potential passengers or victims depending on how you wish to use this ship um, which I think is more than adequate for just a pickup recovery job right and don't think I think a lot of players are going to get stranded in pyro more than they would care to admit a lot of people are going to have the wrong QT drives because they're so used to that Stanton life um, I think there's going to be quite a few call outs for either fuel and or recovery so SRV owners you could be in luck so we have a bed, as we've just seen, and we go in here, we do have a basic um, shower toilet combo. Looks really cool. Basic stuff. Uh, I'm not sure how the hygiene mechanic is going to work in game, but it obviously it's pretty prevalent because it, nearly all the ships of this sort of size have one, a toilet area. Very cool, very clean. Pops out, we have the suit locker to the right as well. Let's open that. So you have the ability to store your armor with the gun rack right next to it as well. So should you find yourself in a bit of a sticky situation, you can gear up pretty quickly, grab the tools you need, fight to the death um, if needs be. So that's good. So we're catered for for armor, storage. There is a storage bin under the bed as well. Um, but it's just the paint scheme in here, I think, that's tricking me into liking it so much because it's subtle in some areas, you know. Here's the little storage bin under the bed very nice of course that's going to be useful people and players are going to use that why wouldn't you great place to store stuff uh, we have a little mini kitchenette here sort of like a hot drinks I think I don't think there's any sort of food vending thing here I could be mistaken I'm not sure how this space tech works um, it might be a fancy microwave I don't know but if you look at the ceiling that's the only hints of industrialism you get everything else is really really tidy in here I really enjoy sitting in this ship it's really cool so then we'll move forward to the neck of the ship then and then we have all the components here so we have three buttons which open the various areas for you to get to your components and repair them and or replace them if you need to um, you'll notice the gravity generator every single time i see the components for the grav gens at the bottom on any ship i always think they look way smaller than they should be but that's just tiny um, for a gravity generator. I mean, technology must be amazing a thousand years in the future. We have life support, coolers, power plants. Everything that you're going to need to fix is going to be easily accessible here. Straight behind the cockpit. What a place. And as you can see, the space to manoeuvre is plentiful. Um, which will make your life very easy compared to some of the other ships. Say like the Retaliator. I wouldn't particularly want to try and run around fixing that ship. That's going to be horrible. It's so cramped, dark and dingy in there compared to something like this. Right, so then we'll move forward into the main workstation. I.e. the pilot's office. So you have the green tinted thing on the left there. I think that's to hold a fire extinguisher, I believe. 
I'm not 100% on that, but that's kind of the vibe I get from that. Otherwise, you know, for emergencies, you'd want something like that highlighted. So we hop in the seat. We have the various buttons. We can enter the remote turret from here as well, as you can see there. Visibility, it's, uh, it's okay. It doesn't need to be amazing, right? It's an industrial ship. It just needs to go out and do its job, but it's pretty good for what it is. We only have two mem two mem <laughs> words, two MFDs here. So is that an issue? Not really, because you can still access everything you need. You just need to hit the menu button and flick through them all. But all the buttons work. It's a very well built ship. You can see it uses the HOSAS system, hands on stick and stick, and I have no complaints really at all with the cockpit it's a very solidly well built ship ship everything works i'm truly a fan of this ship so there we go guys that was my video on the argo srv i hope you enjoyed it if you did you know what buttons to press and i of course will have more star citizen content en route to your location very soon thanks for watching guys take care have a good one cheers